pass. We're gonna we're gonna hold that fort. We're gonna chill. 21k body. If the rear guards can't hit that number, we win. Hey yo, how's it going everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today is gonna be another OTT deck profile. This time we're gonna be simping over Imperial Daughter. The queen that only wants the board all to herself. Now, this deck is quite interesting because um you know, I'm sure if you are searching for this video, um, you have seen, you know, other other creators lists, um, you know, primarily DF maybe, and uh, my approach is slightly different, and um, I'll love to explain why, so, you know, if you're interested, stick around and let's talk about Imperial Daughter with the OTT G event support. So... With the starter, we are going to be playing Lozenji Magus. Lozenji Magus is great. It's a unit that boosts and goes back to the deck, draws you a card, and acts as an extra heal. So you're playing with five heals, and um, healing is always always, always really nice. Uh, we're playing four of the Stride Fodders because we do want to stride often in this deck. And we play four of the Counter Charging PG. Reason being is because we do um, want to play some other units. We don't want to commit as much on the board. And so, just having the counter charging PG, um, just um, it's simple and it's effective, given that the deck can counter blast a little bit from time to time. We are playing two of the Moon Salt Swallow. Now, I know some lists play the um, uh, the Soul Blast one, Return to Hand. I like the Swallow instead because, well, first of all, Soul is a resource that you will be using with other units, and the second thing is, well, why do I need to, well. You know, pay that resource in the first place when the swallow does the same thing, and um, I'll I'll let, let, let me bring up that that unit actually. It's um it's it's the able Neil. Um, you know it requires GB one. It requires this unit to be at rest and and all that. It's 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 so conditional. I mean, I guess you don't need to hit with it, but you know, if you're if you're boosting, you're probably gonna be hitting with it anyways because you're rotating the cards to the right. So, yeah. Able Neil, I, I I think the Swallow is nicer. Um, just beware of putting the Swallow behind the Vanguard, because while well, your rearguards are generally hitting into rearguards, and they, that should probably hit. So, yeah, the difference is I guess Able Neil better suited. It's more flexible. It can be put in behind the Vanguard as well. And um, you know, even if your opponent's at five damage and you're swinging to the face, I guess you can still return it. But uh, Swallow is like most of the time just the better card. And we play three Dark Cat. Um, Dark Cat lets play both players draw a card. It's um, it's solid because it helps you draw into your pieces, and um, you can always call on top of it. So there's that. Next, let's go back to the uh, the deck view. Next, we're playing four of the nine plus threes when attacking a Vanguard plus three K, twelve K meter, and then we're playing four of the eight plus threes. So these two, generally speaking, you will see in both the just the pure Susano build and the Imperial Daughter build, but I'm actually not playing any 10k vanillas, and I'm playing more 8 plus 3s. When you're when you're when you have more cards in your opponent, this unit gets plus 3k in your hand, and one Balser Sir Glass or Glassé. And I don't know the, the pr correct pronunciation. Uh, during your turn, if your soul has no cards, get plus 3k. Um, the reason why I'm opting for 11 or 12k beaters instead of 10k beaters is because. We are playing stance, we are playing Imperial Daughter, we don't want to commit that back row. Um, in order to, for Imperial Daughter to actually maintain that 21k base, um, if we leave a booster standing and we don't sack that stand trigger and we don't boost with it and we don't bounce into your hand, then it makes the whole Imperial Daughter shtick a little bit awkward, don't you think? And so given that, you know, I'm not interested in standing a 10k with a 5k bonus, attacking a 16k Vanguard, um, I'd be much more interested 16 into 16. So that's why I'm playing more beaters that actually hit numbers and not 10k Vanillas. I don't think that the 10k's actually help much defensively. And um, that's um, that's just that's just how I feel about it. I guess if you are a whole life simp, you can still support your uh, Suisse and uh, Miku whatever but yeah not not interested in the 10ks um from my experience uh we're playing for imperial daughters this is the uh protagonist of the deck uh mega circle rigor circle restraint you can care one put one of your other rewards into your soul to lose restraint for the turn 
And if you have no other rear guards, this unit gets plus 10k and a crit in the Vanguard Circle. So generally, you don't need to care about the restraint because you're going to be striding on top of it. So the restraint is not active. And then when you're on the defensive turn, your opponent's going to hit two, your two intercepts. You're going to have nothing else on the board. And then Imperial Lauder's going to be 21k base and just wall off your opponent's attacks. So that, that's the whole gimmick. We play two Susan Nose just in case, you know, we, we can still go into it in certain matchups, especially since the Stride Fodder can search into it. Um, it does have some crit pressure, but most importantly, you know, you can still generate advantage by just Caramelast doing one plus one every single turn when you stride. We play three of the stand triggers, which requires a soul, which is why I'm not a big fan of Neil Abel. Abel, Neil, whatever. Rigor Circle GB1 at the end of the battle, this unit booster, so let's want to withdraw a card and return this to your deck. Um, this is great because, you know, it's a booster that, you know, exits the field uh, and helps you set up your Imperial Daughter and also, you know, into extra trigger, extra stand, which you need for pressure and a draw. And uh, four heal guards, of course. Next, we play four Takami Kazuchis. If you could play four, you would play four. Um, it's just Kamas 2 to draw two. Uh, you choose, check out four and draw two. And um, Kirin is also solid. This is the one you're going to mostly go into because it's free. And Vanilla is because we're poor. So that's basically the deck overall. First ride it's probably going to be a Dark Cat. Uh, second is probably like going to be like a Glacé or the 9k. If your opponent's a 10k for some reason, like a Strike-In, like a Wild, wild Strike-In, then riding the Mokka or the Omnyoji or the Moonlight Knight is fine as well. Um, and I'm confident that we have more cards than our opponent most of the time because we're not committing as much in terms of you know the field with, the, with not committing back rows most of the time. Um, and we're OTT, we're just drawing cards, that's the whole thing. And at grade 3s, obviously, you're going to go into Imperial Daughter, except maybe in some matchups, you would go into Susano. And uh, Strike Kirin, and then when you're low on cards, go to Takemi Kazuchi. That's basically it. It's a really simple deck. Um, you know, draw into grade 2s, call down grade 2s, swing with grade 2s, swing Vanguard, pray you hit that stand trigger, pray your opponent sees, doesn't see that defensive, and then keep swinging. And um, hope you uh, you bore your opponent to death. That's basically it. Um, I honestly don't think that this deck is is uh, too competitive. I think it's a it's a fun deck, but it's a it's a nice change of pace. You know, a blast from the past with Imperial Daughter being such an OG card. Um, back in the TCG, it was part of the ex uh, first extra booster with the, the uh, I, f I forgot the name, but yeah. So let's go into game and see how this deck performs. But yeah, it was um, it was a different time when the um, the manga had like manga exclusive units, and uh, Imperial Daughter was one of them. So so that's nice. And um, honestly, yeah, I think the biggest change is just I don't think there's a reason to play Abel Neil, and I don't think that 10Ks work the best in this deck. But if they work for you, well, that's great says Duba equals VP form, so might have to skip this fight, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Okay, and we are back with that clean free win. It's so good, our opponent decides to VP form instead. Alright, let's go into a proper game, and um, well, I hope it's a proper game, and uh, showcase how this deck can perform. Now, I guess the difference between Susano and this deck is, uh, Susano, it's a lot... It's a lot less, it's a lot more orthodox, so you can like fill up the board, you can, you know, set up boosters, and your stand triggers are more likely to actually pull their weight, because you do have boosters to help you hit those numbers. Um, this deck, less so, but it's still, it's still really solid, because you have a big, big body for defense. So, um, we're gonna keep this hand, um, maybe toss the BG, but um, honestly, you know, having a, having a good ride, having intercepts, grade 2 set up, and the Imperial Daughter as your main ride target is really, really good. Um, Echo Force. Echo Force, I'm a bit iffy about. Um, on paper, it looks like a good matchup. But the thing is, um, you know, their Diamantes or Basil can actually play around the... Uh, they, they draw 2, right? So 2, 4, 6, they draw 2, 8... Um, oh, let's try this. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't overdraw. Math is hard, but... But yeah, like, the, the Basil, the, the amount he used to actually um, hit that 11k before you turn into a 21k base. 
And then at, by the time they swing to your 21 KBs or 26 KBs at this point, um, it would be on a, a grade 4, most likely. So it's not that big of an impact. Um, and because of that, initially I thought it might be a good matchup, but it's actually not as um, as amazing um, as, as I expected, unfortunately. We're gonna let's, let's do this. Swing. Oh, I'm just going to swing river then. Toss the heal back. Okay, drawing the Susano. Couple dagger sailor. Let's see Basil, Basil or Basil? I don't know. So yeah, push it up. Okay, gonna swing to rear guard. We can attack with Imperial Daughter going first, so it is it is a bit. I mean, we can pay for the restraint, but um, it can be a bit awkward, I guess. Uh, I'm still gonna ride it. I'm gonna tuck in the Dark Cat, and I guess this is one way to actually fuel the No Nos as well. Uh, call it a two. Uh, not GB one. The swing. If we see a stand trigger, we're still going to be hitting 14 to 9. So, exactly what we're looking for. We do have a heal guard and a PG in our hand. Um, that does make me feel pretty comfy at this moment. Of course, our opponent has a big hand. Thanks to us as well because of Dark Cat. So, you're welcome. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what they're going to do. Of course, Apple Force loves having some more options. Fill up the board and get those multi-attack going, um, which is good for them, but not good for us. Alright, Slavas has that retire skill, which doesn't matter because we don't have a board besides that intercept that they have to hit over. Alright, setting up the board. Diamantes yeah, ignoring, so they're still getting that swing in. Heal trigger though, the Los Angeles coming in clutch. Also, healing the PG, which means every subsequent PG will be a counter charge. And um, that can definitely come in handy. Of course, you know, as we mentioned, they're probably striding at this point, and they have that number to hit over that um, that big body. Of course, that extra superior call uh, might not come into play with the title board, but that one draw um, definitely helps them in any case. Not setting up another intercept, that's fine, but we do want to see some bodies if we want to body them. Alright, just going into grade 3 for the strike. Okay, we do see a grade 2. That's nice. Let's call the Dark Cat. Oh, uh, no, that's an Imperial Daughter. Maybe I'll call on top of it. Mmm, yeah. A swing. Return to the deck, and again, this returns during your 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 battle phase, rather than end of turn. So um, you can still check it after you uh, you know as long as it's it's boosting a rear column before it's behind your um, your vanguard swing. So we're gonna add the <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I might have the heal guards in my hand because I'm scared of dying right now. Um, let's see what we should do. Should we add the heal guard to our hand? That's the that's the question. Mm, actually, maybe not. Let's add the grade two. The heal guard I can still shuffle. Like one of the things I was worried about is that it's going to be at the bottom of the deck, but we can still shuffle with the stand trigger um, and uh, put that put that put that heal back to the top. Try to bring it back to the top so we can actually heal and um, survive. So they're probably going to go into Lambros, because Lambros is OP, OP. See if they have it. Oh, they have the title board instead, which is interesting because then, you know, we'd, we'd be already at um, at 5 when their Vanguard swings at us, so they're not going to get that um, on hit. Going for the Basil. And I wonder, oh, they're not going to commit that other call. Okay. Heal trigger coming in clutch. Oh, but that that lets them set up the Talibor. I guess um, they played, you know, played well. 
41 hitting 31. Can't get rid of anything on our opponent's board because we're OTT. Kills Batman. Alright, gets that draw, but not calling a inter uh, interceptor. Alright, we're gonna stride. Let's see. Kitty? No, let's go into Takemi Kazuchi. Uh, kind of the last two. Just um, filter the deck out of non triggers and uh, see if we can draw into any PGs. Let's see. Two, four, six, seven. I can draw two. Oh, yeah. Alright, um, let's see, grade twos, grade twos good, give me more grade twos. How many cards do they have at? Two, four, six, seven. Uh, I think this is fine, because at least I'll hit eight. Uh, we do have the booster, which doesn't really help here. At all. How many stands do we have left? We have two stands left. Let's see if we can sack them. Come on, stand. Heal, also good. No. Okay, but that heal definitely does help a lot. I think we healed like three times this game, which is quite huge, actually. Um, let's see if, if, if the, the heals can actually... Um, help us turn the tides. Haha. <laughs> Pun intended. Alright, they're finally gonna go into the Lambros. Trying to go for the kill now. Alright, they have the grade 2 set up and ready to go. I guess the uh, Imperial Daughter number does give you a little breathing space against the Lambros. Um, multi attack play. Because you will be at a bigger body than, than usual, but um, still very scary to, uh, to be on the um, <laughs> on the other side of the Lambros' waves. Alright, power. Heal! Okay, I think we are... We are... We, we, we got a sack, we got a sack. We need one heal. Come on, can we heal? That's the question. Ooh, the six damage heal! So good, so good, so good, so good. And they're drawing, they're drawing through their deck. Oh, that is, uh, that is, that, that, that can be nice to see. Let's go into the Kirin. There are four, which means we can get our own hit. And also thin their deck for one more card, so. They'll take one damage, they'll be at three, they're gonna draw for a turn, so they'll be at two, so they can't stride. Or they can stride, but they can't swing with the Vanguard. Um, we're gonna call this. Call Moonlight, and call the 4K. So the last one, pop itself back to the deck, sets up the glass for the 12K. Come on, Stan! Let's go! Let's add the stride border. Alright, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So no more heals, but they still have two draw triggers. Alright, two cards left in the deck. Can we outgrind them? This is um, spicier than expected. Alright, not striding, that's the right play. We're gonna block that with a PG. Reverts, reverts. So if they see a, see a drive check draw, then uh, we win. If they don't, then uh, we lose. That's just how it is. Oh, they're gonna pass! They're gonna pass! If we stride, what happens? If we stride, we can draw into the, the, the stand. That's not good. Do we just, just. Oh no, they can attack with the Diamantes. Ignoring the intercepts. Mm, what is the play? What is the play? What is the play? The play could be just leave leave Imperial Daughter by itself. That could be the play. That could be the play. 
Um, so, yeah, no stride. Um, pass. We're gonna, we're gonna hold that fort. We're gonna chill. 21k body. If the rear guards can't hit that number, we win. That's it. It's, it's that simple. Just pass. Just pass. Now, all we can do is sit tight and let's see what they can do. Let's see what they can do. Oh! No! There's oh no! It can it can fourth attack. They hit the twenty one key number, and that's it. Wow! Well played to them. That was down to the last card. Like, honestly, we strode. Like, they, they still have, like, PGs in their hand. Like, no doubt. They still have PGs in their hand. And, um, the Diamantes could just go through the intercepts and go for game. So, this was the only thing we could do. If it worked, it would have been amazing. But it didn't. And that's fine. Because it was still a really sick play. So, unfortunately, it didn't show us taking a W with the deck. But it can hold its own, I guess. It is fun. Um, and I showed that I demonstrated that. Uh, do I think you could bring this in the competitive scene? I think most players could play around it. Um, I think that not being able to just commit and build up your numbers and just apply pressure besides just sacking. Um, there, there are just a few things stacked against it. And um, you know, you can take advantage of striding with Imperial Daughter to get rid of the restraint. But at the same time, your opponent can stride as most decks usually do at this point. And I'm easily hit over those uh, 21k numbers as well. So that's basically it for this deck video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Kamui and to Mello, my fellow human, for uh, supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, I guess, give it a thumbs up and like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more. And um, if you want to see this deck more in gameplay, let me know so we could uh, bring this up during streams and whatnot. So thank you all. So much for being there and um i hope you all um give this deck a spin all right enjoy and uh, see you bye